going to ask you a couple other things. The second thing I have to ask you to do is be nice. Be nice. Please be nice. So, we had a, a presentation across the hall. And during that presentation, it came up that one of the problems with the Republican Party is that they're kind of in a special place when it comes to social issues. And it didn't come up in the presentation, but I'll tell you, because I don't have any particular axe to grind. The Republican Party is dead and gut shot. They're stumbling around and bleeding out, and eventually they'll die. Yeah. And the reason that they'll die is important for us as libertarians. We have to understand why they're going to die. It's not good enough to just go, yeah, they're going to die. The reason they're going to die is they're mean. They're not nice. I do not care. When a young person gets that first paycheck, how much they've taken in taxes. I don't care how much they've taken in taxes. And I don't care how much a Republican says, I'll save you money in taxes if you vote for me. That young person will never become a Republican because they have a friend, they have a family member, they know somebody who just wants to visit their partner in a hospital when they're sick, that party is mean to their friends. It's mean to their family. And they will not join a party that's mean. They will not. That's an opportunity. Here's the danger. They will not join our party if we are mean. Now, we have the right position on that issue. So they can't say, well, your position, you're mean. <clears throat> but libertarians have been known in the past to have issues with wanting to be right more than wanting to bring people in. I read an article by Sheldon Richmond where he referred back to a speech he gave at the 1979 Libertarian Party Convention. It was right around the time I was being born. And at that time, it was such a serious problem, he talked about do libertarians want to persuade people, or do we want to hear ourselves be right? What are we trying to do? Because back in 79, libertarians had a problem with wanting to go out and make such a good argument that we know we're right and kind of pin other people down and say, see, we're right, you're wrong, ha-ha! And it, it's great. You feel good. Yeah, I'm right. I damn. Right. It's not persuasive. It doesn't persuade anybody. And it's been a problem since then, and it's a problem now. Is anyone who are married? Woo! No. Okay. Anyone who's married understands that no one ever wins an argument. No one ever wins an argument. You may win a spot on the couch. You may win some resentment from your spouse. You may win extra nagging. You may win a lot of things, but you don't win an argument. Tom Malia, or Ray Maliazzi, the guy who died, used to say, my wife thinks I'm stupid. Because she'll have these arguments with me and I'll go, you're right, honey. I'm not stupid. I'm happy. <laughs> As libertarians, we need to learn how to bite our tongues how to find common ground, how to, how to develop that basic sales skill of saying, you know, if you agree with me on four things, let's talk about those four things. Not the opposite, where you say, hey, you agree with me on four things. Let's talk about that fifth thing that you're wrong about. Because I want to tell you how wrong you are about that fifth thing, and if you don't tell me that I'm right, get out of here. We can't grow a small party of the unique, we have to bring people in. And that goes not only sort of externally to, to people that we're talking to at an outreach booth or a fair or when you're on the campaign trail, but it's internally too. Because contrary to popular belief, not every libertarian was born fully formed in their political philosophy and the 100-100 on the Nolan chart. That's just not how life works. 
And so a lot of people come into the party from other places, with other beliefs. And they may not believe that be beliefs that you think are right. And it's okay. Talk to them about what you agree on. Talk to them about where we can work together. Say yes. Say yes, I'm happy that you're here. You know, I might try this one on for size. This one's going to be hard for the returns. I might be wrong about that. No. I don't know. You know, I, ne I, never, I never thought about, you know, government schools that way. Maybe I should think about that some more. But we do agree on these other things, so let's go work on that project. Have a little humility. Um, you know, and, and one of the things that, that we can so easily fall into that defeats this being nice is we are the only party of individuals. We are an individualist party. We are the only party that recognizes the primacy of the individual. We are the only party that stands for the idea that individual freedom is the greatest good and the only principle by which we should form policy. We believe that with all our hearts. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. That's why it hurts me so much when I see a party of individuals of individualists who love individuals so quickly fall into collectivizing and demonizing our political opponents and treating like treating them like they aren't individuals. As soon as somebody disagrees with you on whether or not there should be government schools, we immediately fall into this internal sort of groupthink language and we say, status, you're a status, you're a socialist, you're a communist. We use terrible, horrible group words like Republican to, to lump people together when underneath the soul of any person with a label, even if it's a label like Republican, it's just terrible, there is a person, there's a person who's not a libertarian yet. And if you don't talk to them in a way that they can hear you, they never will be a libertarian. So be nice. Be nice to those who are coming in. 